Welcome into another edition of Fast Five. Scott's out. He's a little under the weather, and this time he decided to not give it to you like the time he had pink eye. That's I, and I appreciate that very, we're very much. We're still mad at him. My throat, my throat feels great today. Thank you. Okay, I thought you were about to say it was scratching. I was going to oh, no, calmly no, no, back no out scratch. of this camera. No scratch. I'm good. All right. Question number one. Breaking Cajun football is back in action this weekend. The players set up for a big game against Akron is... Al Riles. I think that the Cajuns are probably going to have a little bit more of an issue trying to run the football than they have the last couple of weeks. If there's a strength in this Akron team, it's their defense against the run. But that's going to open things up over the middle, especially if they send a linebacker or two. And with Al Riles healthy again, I'm looking for him to have a big game set. I know he's pumped to be back. I talked to him at practice last week, and he said he was trying to shake back. I'm going to go on the defensive side. Otha Peters, the numbers haven't really been there yet in the statistical category. Akron is going to run the ball. Look out for Otha to get involved and maybe light up a little bit more tackles this week. Question number two. LSU and Leonard Fournette destroyed Auburn this weekend, and Ole Miss took out Alabama. Which game had a bigger impact on the SEC? It'd be easy to go with Leonard Fournette because the dude was just destroying people left and right in LSU. I'm going to go with Ole Miss taking out Alabama, though. I thought Ole Miss was way better than the preseason rankings put them at. So I'll go Ole Miss taking out Alabama. Yeah, I'm going to go with it, too, but for a different reason. I think that coming into the season, we probably would have said LSU taking out Auburn would have been a bigger win. I think we've overvalued Auburn, and I think we've overvalued them a lot, including me uh, last week. I, I think when the dust clears, we're going to find out Auburn's not very good. So I, I think Ole Miss and Alabama has a, big, uh, a better impact. Yeah, Jeremy Johnson, not so good. Out, not so good. Out. You're out. Question number three. Which is worse, the Saints losing to the Bucks and going to 0-2, or Drew Brees developing shoulder issues? Uh, Drew Brees developing shoulder issues is what I'm going to go with because that gives the Saints a better chance to be 0-4, 0-7, and hopefully he'll be back very soon. Oh, that's, that's a scary thought. I'm going to go with the loss to the Bucks because before I even knew Drew Brees was going to be out, you can't lose to Tampa Bay. You can't do it. I thought they were going to be one of the worst teams in the entire league. Drew's shoulder hurting definitely isn't going to help, but if he comes back, then maybe there's a silver lining. Losing to the Bucks, unforgivable. Question number four. The Saints are on two, but they can't be the worst team in the league. The worst team in the NFL is... Chicago Bears. Da Bears. It, it sounds weird to say it, but Jay Cutler has found new levels of not caring about anything. It's weird to say it, but Chicago Bears are probably the worst team in the entire NFL. Actually, I think it's the Saints. The, the, the Bears now, of course, they're going to be without Cutler for a couple of weeks. So we'll see what happens with, the, uh, with, with how they do from here on out. Like you just said, Saints lost to Tampa. And, you know, they've lost to Tampa. They've lost Stop. to Arizona. They got a really good chance to lose to Carolina this week. Tampa Bay and Carolina aren't exactly the best the NFL has to offer. I'm sorry, right now I think there's nobody worse than the Saints. He said it. Question number five. Baseball legend Yogi Berra passed away at the age of 90, and he will be remembered for his game and his way with words. What is your favorite Yogiism? You know, first of all, before we get into all of that, I think we need to go ahead and understand, especially younger folks who weren't around when Yogi Berra played. Like me. Three time MVP, 10 time world champion, considered to be one of the best handler of pitchers in the history of baseball. This guy was a hell of a baseball player. And we remember him for being lovable and for being an ambassador for the game. And yeah, we remember him for the yogiisms as well. But let's not let that overshadow that this guy was one of the greatest players ever to wear a New York Yankees uniform. And I think that's what we need to remember more than anything else. But to answer the question, all right, 90% of this game is happening. See, I like some of his ones that don't have anything to do with baseball. My, my favorite, I think, stands out as a nickel ain't worth a dime anymore because you can use that at any point in time. I'm going to go with the sleeper, though. He said, the towels were so thick I could barely fit them in my suitcase. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yogi yeah, always, pretty good. He always had a way to make people laugh. And like you said, dude played catcher for a long time, too. I played it for two seasons, said, I'm done. So credit to Yogi for that. I'm, I'm telling you, we, we have lost an American treasure. I don't know if there's a baseball, a living baseball player right now 
that we're going to mourn right now maybe as much as we're mourning the over today. And like he said, it ain't over till it's over. This episode of Fast Five is over. We'll see you next week. Bye. And hopefully Scott will be back and healthy. Scott will be back.